cuts or corks. Climate change has the wine closure conversation heating up. If you buy a bottle of my wine for you and your husband's 20th anniversary and you hold that bottle for 10 years and you can't wait to open it and then you open it and the wine's corked, that's a huge fail on the part of the industry. A recent report revealed the quality of cork is decreasing, blaming rising temperatures and other environmental factors. From the cork industry standpoint, we're very interested in climate change. Peter Weber with the Cork Quality Council has been evaluating cork for over a decade, and this study has him screaming sour grapes. This study basically took uh, five pieces of thin cork uh, from a very dry part of Portugal and compared it to five pieces of thick cork from a relatively wet part, whatever corks they were comparing were actually genetically uh, the same tree that they have been for hundreds of years. This would be thick cork. The corks are punched out of the side. A thin piece um, might be like this. They mentioned that thin cork has more lenticels, which it does, and lenticels are these, are these lines that come through here. They, they allow air to reach from the outside into, into uh, the center of the cork. The concern was that that would let more air into the wine. These lenticels run sideways on the cork. They don't run up and down. So really the number of lenticels, these little dots on the cork, really has no bearing um, on oxygen coming through. Only 15% of the cork that's harvested from the forest um, is ever punched into wine corks. The rest is going into tiles, cork boards, and we also make a lot of technical corks, and they can make the thin discs and the particles out of all of this uh, uh, thinner cork wood. With the character of cork in question, sixth generation winemaker Stephen Kent Mirisu has his sights on screw caps. I love screw caps for their ease of use. I love screw caps for the fact they don't impart TCA, that, that corkiness chemical, into wine. Hopefully I'll have the guts at some day to do everything in screw cap, although there's, there's still marketing disadvantages, especially with higher end wines. I don't have the experience from an ageability standpoint with screw cap. None of us are gonna escape climate change uh, unscathed. If we can get to a point where, where there's confidence in alternative closures, uh, we'll probably head that direction. With the wine world looking to alternatives, Noma Quartz Don Huffman says when it comes to closures, synthetic stoppers are the cream of the crop. We're not really that concerned about what's happening with natural cork because we make a synthetic cork that's made from sugarcane polyethylene. Our wines can't get corked and they have a managed oxygen, so they can't oxidize unless somebody shelves something that's longer than expectation. Portugal's home to the world's largest cork forest area and cork producer. Amarine's Carlos Jesus says natural cork isn't going anywhere. When you look at cork, you're looking at one of the best sustainability stories around the world. The trees are never cut down. It takes a quarter of a century before you can actually go to that tree and harvest that tree. And then only every nine years minimum, you're able to harvest the tree again. Cork has been used since the Egyptians. The Romans perfected the harvesting of cork. I've seen a lot of changes around the world and the species itself, again, it's dozens of millions of years uh, in the making. It's a very, very tough tree like any other oak. And I think we're going to survive this climate changes also. Despite their differences, everyone agrees global warming isn't waning. We all have to worry about uh, climate change. It's just that, frankly, the cork tree is in a good position to fight it because A, we can adjust the amount of time we spend between harvesting, and B, the tree can really take a lot. I think if climate change is happening as all indications in the, in the scientific community point out, the day that the cork forest are severely affected by that climate change, Monique, you and I probably wouldn't be here around talking. 